Hi, this is Sunil. In this screencast, I'll talk and show you how macros work in Lisp. Macros in Lisp are much more capable than macros in other programming languages. Rather than just providing a simple shorthand notation, Lisp macros give you the capability to truly extend language. Lisp macro facility allows you to define operators that are implemented by transformation the transformation. The definition of a macro is essentially a function that generates Lisp code, a program that writes programs. You define a macro with def ma macro form like this. Define macro is like define function, but instead of returning values, the body of define macro returns a Lisp form. Let's see how macros work. Your program calls a macro the same way it calls a function, but the behavior is quite different. First, none of the macros, pa macros parameters are evaluated. However, macro parameters are bound literally to the corresponding arguments in the macro definition. If you pass this argument to a macro, the argument in the body of the macro definition is bound to the literal list and not the value 35. Since macros can be called in written values, they tend to be associated with functions. Macros work differently from normal functions, and knowing how and why macros are different is the key to using them correctly. A function produces results, but a macro produces expressions, which when evaluated produces results. Macro expander The macro expander is invoked receiving all of the actual parameters bound to their corresponding arguments as named by the defined macro form. The macro expander is just the body of the defined macro form, which is just Lisp code. The only catch is that the Lisp code system expects the macro expander to return a Lisp form. The Lisp system then evaluates whatever form the macro expander returns. Macro expansion The preceding paragraph is conceptually correct. However, a Lisp implementation may expand macros at different times. A macro could be expanded just once when your program is compiled, or it could be expanded on first use as your program runs, and the expansion could be cached for sub subsequent reuse, or the macro could be expanded every time it's used. A, po a properly written macro will behave the same under all of these condition implementations. Macro parameters since the arguments passed to a macro are Lisp objects representing the source code of the macro call, the first step in a macro is to e extract whatever parts of those objects are needed to compute the expansion. For macros that simply interpolate their arguments directly into a template, this step is trivial. Simply defining the right parameters to hold the different arguments is sufficient. Generating the expansion For simple macros, the special backcode syntax is perfect. To review, a backcoded expression is similar to a quoted expression, except you can uncode particular sub-expressions by preceding them with a comma possibly followed by an at sign. Without an at sign, the comma causes the values of the sub-expression to be included as is with an at sign. The value which must be a list is spliced into the enclosed enclosing list. Summary Lisp macros are simple programs that generate other Lisp mac programs. Moral: Even seemingly simple macros are hard to get right, so don't use macros unless they really add something. A good rule of thumb is don't use define macro if define function will work fine. Thank you.